around the world in 18 motherfuckers days. do be do around the world with my queen Whoopi, the whoop the girl to woman what this is where is she i thought you were gonna get her as a guest oh well you know what i tried texting her well you know what she's so busy because she's around the world she is around the world she's promoting her new film yeah and she's having she has a great view i know thank you very much that was that was very good that was bad. That, was that bad. it's just getting better and better. I am, I'm, I'm. It's just gonna get better and better. So, <laughs> Woo! crazy. Yes. How was your week? Oh, uh, my week was a little bummered, but it it really helped me to um, test my resolve when shit comes my way, and I'm good. Spill the tea. Spill the tea. Well, you know, it's it's you know, in these high in these home this home world, you know, people want to sell their houses and landlords want their property. And um, he filed the judgment to say that we have to get out. So who knows what's going to happen in the next two days. <laughs> well, so, I have, I have, I've got three guest rooms here in this well, house. Well, you know, I'd love to fly to Spain, but you know, I figure- We'll do one live. We'll do one live from Spain. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. I'm not worried. It is what it is. Um, you can't win them all. Yeah. Um, so I mean, deep inside of me, I'm kind of like, what? I don't want this to happen. But another thing, when I think of the stars and the cosmos and astrology, this is ending of cycles. So where one cycle ends, something beautiful begins. So it's just a matter of getting through the darkness and seeing the beauty. Because I really don't believe we're going to end on the streets. So he's been there, done that. Um, you're flagging a dead horse, but... Who knows? People, human people are, um, and they're being illogical. It's not like you're like, okay, I, you know, we get it. They're just being really, really oddly illogical. And and as I really truly believe, the cure is the conversation. Plug for my podcast. Um, they're not having the conversation, which is very weird. Yeah, what so, is up with that? Why do you feel like? Because I've experienced that a bit too nowadays. Right. Um, sometimes that manifests as ghosting, like where you're in the midst or you've started a conversation and then somebody disappears, they ghost yes. you. Right. What right. is that phenomenon and how can we fix it? Because, yeah, like, yeah, you know, um, sucks being on the receiving end of that. Well, well, yeah, but you know, there's a. Re I really believe that there's a manifestation here of me. Of uh, that's what I truly believe. So, if this is happening, I looked at it and kind of equated it to, I'm just saying no to the past. I'm saying no. I don't want you here anymore. Yeah. I want. I don't. And I really truly don't want to be here. I just. We just don't know where to go forward. And I. I'm not lying. I really don't want to be here. So right. I, I would, my heart. Well, you manifested that shit, honey. Yeah, I, I manifested. <laughs> I take full responsibility right. for what is coming at me right now because I truly don't want to be here. I, I, if any, if anybody um has listened to some of these shows, I have a deep rooted connection into Jamaica. So I believe my spirit has already took my luggage and has gone over there and sitting on the beach waiting for my body to catch up. So, yeah, well, there it is, right? There it is. There it is. So I don't know what to tell you. This next time we could be live, uh, screens classic shot live from the streets of Nanaimo. And I say that in a little bittersweet way, though. <laughs> no, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> ah, okay. Well, but you know what? No matter, no matter where it is in the world, around the world, we will mm -hmm. be bringing you this show every week because so it means something to us. It damn straight it means something to us. So as I went on into my 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 muff of a more of a weekend. Oh, and forgot today is my birthday. Happy birthday to you. That's why she's wearing a crown. Happy birthday, Queen. And what do you what do you think of my crown? I love your your crown. Do you? It looks like a chakra crown. What's it made out of? Crystals. The stones, each one, there's, I think, Carlin here. I'm going to opposite. There's amethyst around here. And 
Another one over here. It's it's just it's one of those. It's beautiful. Everyone should have a birthday crown. Yeah. Well, we should. Like, why not? I I might just keep it because I feel complete, and that is what a car. Uh, um, that is what a a crown chakra. It means completion. And yeah. when you go around the world in eighty days, uh, it's a complete journey, right? And not only do you make a complete journey, it's a three hundred and six degree sort of, sort of thing. And this is what our girl Whippy has done. But before we get into the the Wonder Woman of comedy and just whoopi whoopi goldberg tell me mr hc co-host and fabulous the man to be <laughs> the man of the hour to be too sweet to be sour tell us what your day and <laughs> has been this weekend too sweet to be sour i love that <laughs> t-shirt t-shirt <laughs> um i'm good i've had a weird couple of days i don't know if there's something planetary going on but I've had really wild and crazy vivid dreams, but I've also been sort of hanging out there more. I, like I've been sleeping a lot and I've been a little headachey and just weird. Right. And so I don't know what it's going to, I think part of it is the Kalima that comes the, here in Southern Spain. We get the, the dust storms from the Sahara right. coming across and sometimes they're really intense um where you can feel it in your teeth i mean the grit of the saharan desert and um it hasn't been like that but it's been really hazy right um and that always affects me the barometric pressure whatever's going on in the atmosphere i'm a human barometer i've always been that way so I just been, you know, dealing with that. I had a really interesting dream last night. I was oh. in India and I was in some kind of a it felt like it was a hotel lobby. Like there were plants everywhere and stained glass and light coming through a glass ceiling. And there was this aerial acrobat, this man. And he was amazing. He was flying around like in circles, but doing all these kind of complex shapes and flips and stuff. And when he came down from his, his routine, I came up to him and I just said, I, I was blown away by what you just did. That, that was, you know, amazing. Tell me about yourself. He said, well, professionally, I'm a mathematician. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. Well, that was to, to how, is this your creative side for balance or whatever? He said, no, actually acrobatics um, affect the human brain to where we can process numbers much more easily and understand the magic of numbers. Okay. And it was this very mystical kind of moment. And I said, oh, well, you know, I was, I was diagnosed with dyscalculia when I was a teenager, right? which is kind of like, um, it's kind of like when you can't conceive numerically, right? Right. Okay. And so it makes math or even checkbook balancing really impossible, really hard. I failed every math class I ever had. <laughs> and so he said, well, you know, if you had been taught ac acrobatics as a child, you would have saved yourself a lot of suffering. I was like, oh. Whoa. Interesting. you know and uh, and then this couple approached me from a a university or a college and they they it didn't approach me they approached him and they obviously knew him and he introduced them to me and um they asked me about myself and what I do and I said well you know besides my my podcasting and, and my, you know, talk show and stuff. Right. I said, I'm, um, you know, I'm a theater director and we explore the human experience across the threshold between our physical and spiritual beings because right. we're both. I said, oh, you're exactly who we're looking for. Will you come and do a residency at our college? And they told me the name of the college. Right. And I woke up this morning. I'm like, 
that was a weird dream. That was really bizarre, right? Yeah. So, of course, you know, I'm right on the search engine looking up acrobatics and mathematics. And I'm looking <laughs> up the name of this college. And there is a college in India with that name. Wow. Hey. And it's a, it was just really weird, you know. So right. it was, it, I'm just sort of sick. And I, I, I posted about it on Facebook and my friends. And I was going to oh, say. You're, you're moving to India. India. I saw that picture on Facebook. I'm like, is this the same thing? That is this correlating with the story of the picture on the Facebook? And now that I know, interesting. Yeah. I like I like how the correlation between acrobats and being a better mathematician, um, because I was very I love doing you know just up and down and all over the place. And I was pretty good at my at math, and so was my brother. He was actually pretty. He was the one that tutored me on math most of the time, and I would tutor him on English because he had just came from Jamaica and you know blah blah. blah. Yeah. So it was this trade. So, you know, when you look in the correlation of that, I'm like, interesting. It would be interesting to do a, a, a sort of a test and see all the acrobats out there, those that fly around in the air, gymnastic or otherwise, and see their level of, you know, math. Mathematic prowess. And yes. what's interesting, I did, I, I did look up, I started looking up um, different, uh, you know, I just looked up acrobat math or acrobatics mathematics whatever and there is a correlation there is something to do with the geometric structure of the acrobat routines that yeah. does correlate to math and there have been whole studies and, and things done on this so i have no idea what that means for me but um because i'm you know i'm not gonna go be an acrobat at 56 sorry oh you know I just lost my thought. That's okay. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Let's talk well, about Whoopi Goldberg because I I mentioned to Queen Bee about because we were you know coming up with a list of films and right. things that we wanted to show and talk about. And I don't even remember how it came up, but but Whoopi popped into my head. I've always loved her. I've always thought she was amazing. And back in 1985, she did a one-woman Broadway show uh, based on a stage thing that she had done prior. And it was groundbreaking. It was groundbreaking. It was theater. It was stand-up. It was character. It was a one woman event, really. And it put her on the map. And I asked Queen B, did you see it? Had you seen it? But you were little when that, in 1985. Oh. You were a little wee bit little, little Queen B. You just read my mind. I was like, yeah. You're a little baby you know. B. You know, um, and before I like to get there, I just like a, a spot for sponsors if you'd like to add. You know, I we have cups every single show, you know, and this is the cup of the week. So if you'd like your logo on the cup of the week, send us your cup, contact us, and we will make sure the cup of the week gets the special attention it deserves. Cup of the week. She just came up with that. We had not talked about this. So talk about spontaneous brilliance. <laughs> I thought you wouldn't mind. <laughs> I love that. And, you know, speaking of Cups of the Week, yes. we are planning on having a line of merch for classic screenshots. Yes. And we will. that will include coffee mugs. That will include T-shirts. That will include buttons. Remember buttons? Buttons. Oh, yes. So let's button down to the, the topic at hand. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> You, if nothing else, you're going to get the most exciting focus segues you've ever seen in TV and anywhere on the internet. Yes, right here, we create on the point, in the moment segues that come out of nowhere. So join us right. every week for the random segue into the next subject. So, and you know, do you know how they can get you, get, how they can find us every week? Ooh, please let the audience know, Henry. Well, first of all, what do we call our audience? We call them, oh my goodness, my mind has gone. Oh, wait, wait, wait. 
<laughs> Bob. Bob. <laughs> As in movie Bob. Movie Bob. Bob. If you're watching this, you are a buff. And if you subscribe and like and click the bell. Yes, the, please do. The bell will give you a notification when we have a new video up every week. Or even new merch when that time comes. And new comes. merch. Yes. I don't know. Will the bell tell you about merch? Who? Will the bell tell you about merch? <laughs> no. But, but we will tell you about video. merch. Yes. We will tell you about merch in the video. So when you <laughs> click the bell, you'll get a notification there's a new video, and you best be sure we will have new merch to share. Yes, new merch to share. So it'll let's, be affordable. Yeah. Yeah, you know, affordable, it'll be fun, and you'll be supporting this wonderful channel, a Classic Screenshots mondays uh and and this week we're gonna which right now actually today we're talking about whoopi goldberg and you know you know henry has said you know i was a little girl when whoopi goldberg made it no, i wasn't a little girl you were a little girl i was a little I was girl, a yes. girl already i was a little girl in i'm talking about the little girl in all of us and the little boys in all of us there's one in everybody you know kyle we were little children we were yes. little children and you know when I when Whoopi Goldberg hit the scene, I was a child, and I I don't remember Whoopi. I you know none of that. I was in a really funny place. I was living on the streets, going from group homes to group homes. So when I first saw this movie, it in the sorry, in, uh, not movie, but um, I guess it's more like a special. It's not a movie. Well, it's a movie of a stage play. I mean, okay, it's, stage it's, play. it's not really yeah. a play, but it's. You just one gotta woman watch. Show. It's one. a one woman show. And you know how sometimes um, they'll take a Broadway show and then it'll be recorded specifically for um, for movie viewing kind of right. experience, not somebody with their cell phone in the audience and it's all right. fuzzy, distant and all that. This is well done, it's polished, it's done for the camera and um, yeah, how old were you in 1985? I was exactly and years old, and I, I was a right, right. So by this time, I'm in the group homes, and I'm not even anywhere near comedy. And I think the first time I really got connected with Whoopi was Ghost, truly, or even Jumping Jack Flash. Excuse me. Wow. But yeah. That's those are the things that popped out in my head. I didn't really. Yeah see Whoopi um as a child but looking back at the move at the her her show her movie the nostalgia not only within the time it was in but even as her message is still prevalent for this in this time so oh. I'm looking at I'm looking at myself as this little girl and now I'm receiving the message as a grown woman I go wow and I, we watch both double features she did one in 1985 and the other one was 2005 20 years later right 2005 uh 20 years later 2000 yeah so here here we are um just looking at this and we can see whoopi grow in real time like here she is she's young and she has and this how 20 years later yeah she she has this, i'm sure she has this bright wide-eyed fairy tale look at the future, everything is pumping, everything's jumping. And it was just like me. A little girl at that time had my bright eyed future. Wow. And I could really recognize and resonate with Whoopi when she um she she takes each character and gives them that, you know, that crisis moment. And she does it with humor. And she brings the crowd along to saying that, you know, pain it doesn't have to get you down, but we do have to see each other. Um, as people. And I remember being a little kid and wanting the world to be that way and then seeing the new one and going, wow, we still have the same message um, that's going on today. And and I just thought, wow, growth is such a funny thing. You know, you see your individual growth and then you look at the world and you're like, you know. Well, each I what I love about it too is that it's in the first one, um, she's got what, like five characters. She's got Fontaine. Yeah. yeah. Fontaine, who is a an educated junkie. Yes. And then there's a little child with a yellow shirt on her head. Mm. Oh, right. we, let's let's take a pause for the cause here. Let's just talk about this character for a minute. We'll go back to all of them, but this one jumped yeah. out. 
uh, um, any black little girl and any any little girl of color who had who didn't have long hair that is thin and is, can be blown in the wind without chemicals will understand that this character that Whoopi portrays resonates with all of us. Putting the shirt over your head, me for me, it was pantyhose, and it was it was nude according to society, nude pantyhose, and I would just walk around. Mm. Nude. I would walk around with the two legs on the on my shoulder and go, "Oh, I love my hair flowing in the wind. Oh, I love my hair. I want white hair." I remember saying that because all the boys liked the hair, and and it was easy to comb, and it just it was just seemed so hard. And it was it for me. It reminded not only had the hair was hard to 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 um challenging excuse me challenging to to comb through but it, it wasn't it, it didn't make you feel like a beautiful little girl and as a black woman we all felt or black kids we all felt like we were second class and, and you know it's funny because right after i saw that we watched uh the, the show with Whoopi. Um, I saw this this um, little video on TV and it not TV but on in somewhere on social media, and they had a picture of five different colors of kids from white to black, really dark, and they asked the little white girl which one is the dumb child, and she went to the darkest child, mm -hmm. and then they asked the black little girl which one's the prettiest child, and she went to the whitest child, and. You know, just that little piece that Whoopi did, it goes so deep that, you know, we we emulate what we see on TV. And when we don't see ourselves, we want to become something else. And she really plays that part like a little girl. And she said, you know, this is my T-shirt. And you, oh, my grandmother, you know, where's my new t My grandma bought me a, t a new shirt. Uh-oh. And she realized she had, you know, she had put this is her dream like and 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 it's sad that we haven't learned to accept our individual beauty and it's still today that's that's what's funny her messages are still really there. yeah i mean it's a really important conversation all the time yes and it has been an important conversation all the time right because yeah you know, i've seen similar videos um that you described about the different children uh and they put a a a baby doll, right? They put yes, yes, black baby too. doll, and both of the girls wanted the white baby doll because she was the pretty one, she was the smart one, right? And one of the the poignant parts for me in that skit was where she said, "You know, I told my mom I don't want to be white, in, I don't want to be black anymore. Mm -hmm. I want to be white. I want to have a Barbie dream house and a Barbie dream yeah. car." And there were no black Barbies at that time. And, you know, and she's, and my mom said, well, you better stop wishing for that because you're never going to be anything but black. You could sit in mm -hmm. Nevada Clorox all day. It's <laughs> not going to happen. And you're still going to be black. Right. And she said, and mama was right because I did and I got burned. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> but I think she got burned on a number of levels. And I think children do. Right. Um, I, I, yeah. you know, when you said the Clorox, it's funny that that part of that Clorox incident is is a, is a real life incident. People do bleach their skins. They do. They really do. On part in parts of the Caribbean, it's a very big issue that in order to be seen or get the good job or get the good husband, your skin cannot be dark. It has to be much lighter you got to be able to pass and many of the shows that we've a couple of shows that we've done please check out our other shows in the link below and don't forget to subscribe because we do cover some very interesting topics and one of them is passing and it is such a deep core um need to be accepted that people will go through the extremes of of you know, sometimes if it's not just for, you know, medical reasons, just for aesthetic reasons, they'll get the straighter nose because it's, it is, it's synonymous with being white and powerful and having, so, you know, she, Whoopi Goldberg really, even in her young, young seeds of becoming who she wanted to be, really experienced a traumatic growing, you know, growth, because here she is now at a young age, spilling all these topics that most people don't want to talk about. Nobody wants That's to talk true. about. Nobody wants to talk about young little so groundbreaking. She was yeah. she was glass ceiling breaking because she was a woman doing this. Right. Rarely, rarely did women 
achieve the potential to to shine in that way right. as an individual um and certainly not on broadway in a one woman show right right um there were comics there were comedians like joan rivers and others that that did have their moment in the spotlight but right. they were you know they were in the nightclubs they were in, in vegas they were on tv on right. the tonight but Whoopi took Broadway by storm. Actually, the, the title of it is Direct from Broadway, Whoopi Goldberg right. Direct from Broadway. And the second one is Whoopi, Whoopi Goldberg Back to Broadway. Right. right. And, but but what I what I was gonna say is that even for me, that that character really spoke to the inner child. Right. That's in all of us. And I was already 19 when that came out. Okay. And I could relate to it. I'm not a black girl. I right. certainly don't have a problem with, you know, hair. I, I had more hair at that time. But, right. but, but the hair issues that not just black women, but black men go through. I mean, I remember the whole Jerry Curl movement. I had a Jerry Curl. No hair. Yeah. <laughs> I knew a lot of guys who did, <laughs> too. Crazy. But there's always oh been God. this sort of, you know, and I've seen, uh, you know, having traveled around the world, I've seen billboards for skin lightening cream. Yeah. They have them in Brazil, you know, where, where and, and, and there is a lot of, of uh, ism within the BIPOC community around lightness and darkness. Yes. And, and what a, what a, and, you know, above all, I mean, amounting to all the things that could divide us and separate us, eh? Of all the things that could divide us and ruin us and I we know. choose Religion, to skin color, what are we going to get through this? Yeah, and speaking about that, her other character that I love in Back to Broadway, the first one was, um. Director Broadway, yeah. It is the one where she is playing a disabled or disadvantaged um, physical being that has her leg limping and the arm going this way. Disabled and, and disadvantage. Yeah, disadvantage. <laughs> she, oh my goodness. Because again, it ties in with what we were talking about a little girl because the essence of all of that is inclusion. And and, and I remember uh, I worked, I was very blessed to work with a, as I was a nanny for 16 years. I was, I was a nanny. Were you good for you? I was a nanny, yeah. I believe you, I believe you. You got the gift, brother. You got the gift. Henry uh, Poppins. Yeah. <laughs> and I ha had the blessing of working with a little girl who had cerebral palsy. And I remember this, the mother was very kids glove with her. Just very, oh, don't do this. And oh, she's this. And I remember going in. And once the mother left, I looked at her. I said, I know you're in there. You may only be able to fart and laugh, but trust me, I know you're in there. And <laughs> we keep connected on a level that her mom was fascinated because her mom used to give her just bottle, strain her food or blend her food and put it through a bottle. And I said, have you ever tried giving it to her to a spoon? If nothing else, for the dignity of her, for the dignity of this 10 year old, you know, for the dignity. She goes, no, she can't do it. So. I know this is not for any nanny to go beyond the parental advisory. If your parents tell you to do something, do it. But in my gut, I went for it. I started feeding her with a spoon. And I tell you, the little girl just brightened up. She knew what I was doing. And when yeah, she did. Yeah, they understand, yeah. They understand everything. I don't know why people think that. And these, and these are the type of energies when they have some form of physical disability, their other senses kicked in. So she was a great observer. Oh, oh you wow. could. Ooh, let me tell you, don't tell. I told, I remember I used to tell this child some secrets. And I said, God, if the day this child starts talking, oh. We are in trouble. <laughs> well, and it's up to us to figure out how they communicate. Yes, not yes. For us to impose our ways of communicating. Exactly. On them. And I had a good friend. I must have been about 12, 12 or so. Mm -hmm. And I used to go and visit my mom outside of Denver, Colorado. Mm -hmm. right. And there was a boy that was the son of a friend of hers. And he was a little bit older than me, but he had cerebral palsy. And he was nonverbal, but he could do sign language. And wow. he taught me sign language. 
and he would come up with signs for names for people. Oh, wow. My mom was Diane, and so this is D, right? right? And she used to wear big earrings, right? right? So the sign for her was D, Diane, with the big earrings, right? Oh, he put it up. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then, you know, and he had a sign for me, too. Right. And it was very special because I remember the day that I, I met him, I was wearing a Superman t-shirt. Right. And his sign for me was the letter S and then drawing it S on the chest like oh, Superman. Oh, wow. See, that's, 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 that's the essence of what Whoopi brings out in, in her One Woman show, Back to Broadway, first and second one is she she has a way of delivering the hard truth the the perceptions that she's seen which are beautiful and divine in a humorous way and i we can always learn from that you know sometimes we get so heavy about crappy things that happen in our life when we can just add a dose of humor to it spin it see the positivity in it and you know please i recommend you to watch it because you are you are drawn into her world and she gets you laughing and feeling comfortable, sitting back in your seat, having a drink, relaxing, and suddenly, bam, she hits you. And you're oh. not afraid of it. You're just leaning more into it going, oh my goodness, I did not see it. Because an empty cup can be filled better than a full cup. And if she opens you up and lets you empty all the day's crap and whatever else is going on in the world, and then she fills you with this truth of perspective that makes you go, I was not aware of that. I did Come not know. Away. You know? <laughs> Sorry. Make it your cup of the week. <laughs> Gather around with the coffee cup. With the cup she does. Week. Okay, so she does. Fontaine, who is a, right. an intellectual uh, philosopher, right? Junkie, right? And junkie is a non is politically incorrect word to use. Okay. So disclaimer moment. <laughs> It's for the time, though. It's for the time. Well, but that, that's how the character refers to. Oh, I see what you're saying. Or okay. himself, it, the themselves. It, it, they they call themselves junkies. So, um, you know that that one was really profound because it's sort of there's a stigma that we have for people who um, either use drugs or or you know find themselves addicted or in a right. situation. We look at them, and I, I one of the the first moments that I just gasped was she said, um, "You know, I have a, a PhD in in literature or whatever it was, right? Right, or in history." And then she looks at the audience because they're like, "What? You're a junkie?" Yeah, they hear you. She's like, "What do you mean? I'm not stupid, you know." <laughs> <I'm not> stupid. <laughs> you know exactly it. Um, you know, uh, I was very blessed to on on, on one of my journeys to the world through to to life. I met this homeless gentleman who um, I would when I, as I was a nanny, I would see him every day on the streets, every day in the street. And um, when you know better, you do better. And I remember just looking at him and just going, what's wrong with this guy? Get a job, shit like that, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And I was with the kids. I mean, I never vocalized, it was just in the head space. Yeah. And then I remember one day, uh, and these are the things that happened in my life. I woke up in the morning and I remember this energy popped out of my, sub my consciousness, my subconsciousness into my consciousness and said, if that man, and he was wearing this bright orange jacket, if the, if the man in the orange jacket asks you for something, give it, to, give it to him for as long as you are working where you're at. And I was like, does that make any sense to me? And I, and I, I trusted my gut, what I felt at that moment. And every day this man would come up to me and ask for me, ask for, and back in the day, disclaimer alert, I do not know, I don't do it anymore. I used to smoke cigarettes. I've learned for me, the personal, detrimental health, what can it do for me? I've chosen not to do it anymore. Back in the day, I used to smoke a good pack of cigarettes. And this gentleman, Joseph, would come up to me and goes, can you give me a cigarette and buy me a cup of coffee? And this went on for a year, a wow. year. And I never questioned it. I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing. And if he didn't need anything, he wouldn't ask. Sometimes I just walked by him and he just looked at me and nod. I didn't yeah. even know his name until the end of the process because I was leaving the job. And I don't know how he knew, but the universe sent him at the right time. And he had this corduroy suit on. 
and it was brown, his hair was combed, and he looked really, you know, he looked like he was going to find a job, and he looked at me, he was, I was in a restaurant, the um, friendly Greek back in the day, and he knocked on the window, and he saw, I noticed it, and I walked out there, and he said, he looked at me, and he said a few words, he said, thank you for seeing me as human, and he walked away. That was it. I had no idea. That was the, the end of the experience. But Whoopi always in the Junkie series, like when she, the character, excuse me, when she brings out that not only I, I'm just here because of circumstances, it doesn't take away my brain. It doesn't take away okay. anything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't take anywhere of anything. And I, I still yeah. would love a good conversation. I still would like a hot meal. I would still like love. And, well, it's interesting yeah. because every one of those characters, whether it was Fontaine, the junkie, right. whether it was the surfer chick, right, who gets oh, kicked, surfer out, chick house, was great. She was kicked out of the house at age 13 for becoming pregnant, oh right, God. or the little child, or the woman from Jamaica, <laughs> right, or the person with, I think it was probably a degree of cerebral palsy. In right. The Yes, body, I see what you're saying. Body, okay. Yeah. Um, it's all about appearances. It's all about how it, it holds up a mirror to the audience and says, look at how we look at one another and judge without knowing the person. And everybody has a story. Everybody has a heart. Everybody right. was a little child. Right. Everybody. Yeah, everybody was a little child, you know, and, and that's 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 something that we really truly forget, you know, that we were all once children trying to just figure our way out to becoming adults, being youthful, having fun. Um, and then something happens and then, then something else happens and then something else happens. And before you know it, we're buried. Our child, our inner child is buried under the debris, a debris, a debris of, of trauma. <laughs> and pain yeah. and, and nobody sees that. And unfortunately, when, you, when you're when you buried under stuff, it looks really messy when you try to communicate. It looks really messy because you're you're through, like, you know, you're just like, oh, you have all this dirt. If you imagine a little seedling and before it comes out, it's not the prettiest thing. You know, they got dirt all over it. Even babies, God bless babies. That's right. Oh, they got all kinds of dirt coming out of everywhere. It's not the prettiest thing. But when we finally clear away all the gunk and the debris and clean it up and just kind of, and not even physically, not necessarily physically, but without judgment, clearing away the judgment, we can remember that there was a little child out there in, in there that just says, hey, do you remember me? Do you remember me? Right. And that child sometimes very often is still in need of the things that we didn't get from adults when we were children. And guess what? We now have this great gift, this opportunity to parent ourselves, to say, hey, I can be the parent to my little inner child that I didn't right. get to have. Right. And, and that's a real, that's I think what came across probably for the first time for me at 19 in watching Whoopi Goldberg direct from Broadway that it gave me an inkling that not only do we have inner children that still need care, that are still shivering and frightened and confused and feel like they're ugly and feel like they're, it's all those old, you know, all those old tapes. We all have those. But I also had an inkling, and I'm, I think I'm onto something, nobody talks about this, that every child also has an inner adult Ooh, interesting. And, every, and that's what I got from Whoopi, is that every child has an inner adult that can reason, that can grasp right from wrong, mm. and a sense of their own identity. We're finding that a lot. You and I have talked about gender identity uh, in children, you know, which is really at the top of a conversation today. And what I loved about Whoopi, too, is that some of her characters were male, some were female, and some you couldn't tell. Right, some some you couldn't tell. No, no, no. Right, and what it meant, what what it boils down to is that it doesn't matter. No, because really. it's yeah, because the message is I'm always. Sure there were little black boys with that beautiful blonde hair, you know, shirt on their head, well, yeah. wanting to emulate 
the lack of representation that they saw on television, because that's what that was about. She wanted to emulate every beautiful white person she saw on TV because there were very few beautiful black people on television at that time. I remember, you know, it's funny. Um, I remember one of my favorite things to go to was um, after lunch or during lunch in, in, in grade school was going home to watch a half an hour of Fred Flintstone, the Flintstones. And I remember thinking, where are the black people in the beginning? Because the Flintstones represent the Stone Ages, the beginning of That's creation. Right. And, and I everybody going, was black. There's nobody, I couldn't remember going black. Everybody was black in the Stone Ages. <laughs> <laughs> isn't that ironic? I know, isn't that ironic? And I remember thinking, I'm not here, but I love me some Flintstones. I right. really did, and uh, but I noticed that even as a child, and I remember I used to question my, we're not going to bring the, and even when they did the Asian characters, boy, was that stereotype. That was such a stereotype. Buck teeth, thick glasses, <laughs> right, pinched up <laughs> eyes, some kind of triangular. Yeah, hat. I mean, I was very blessed to have a neighbor. Her name was Monica, and she, her, her lineage or bloodline was from Korea, and. I remember not even, I just found it. I was very blessed to have a, when we lived, they called it the ghetto. You had a whole kind of string of people up in the ghetto. You, you know, just whatever. Um, and we, I was always was surrounded with so many different colors. So when I, I was, I never really had, not really, I never had an issue with race. My mom was very open. I mean, she had other issues, but, um, yeah. you know, she, 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 she wasn't, you know, wasn't, she never, she never said that, you know, these type of people are bad or blah, blah, blah. She would just always talk about the spirit. Like, you know, if, don't look what people are doing. Don't look what people are saying. Look what they're doing. And that never had anything. Like. Yeah, or what they look like. She's like, don't worry about that because people can hurt you in any form. You got to look. You got to look. Pay attention. Pay attention. Yeah. Um, but we did have the, you know, my mom did have her in her little things about Jamaica and being, you know, she was just a black woman, you know, and she always knew that black being black was gorgeous. Being black was beautiful. And it was, she, one thing she always said to me was don't put chemicals in your hair. And I haven't since, I mean, I braid it, but I've never, I have never, I, I listened to her after a while. I said, I can see yeah, what she's yeah. trying to say, because it really is. It's like, you know, for, for most cultures or religion, hair represents strength. And she always thought that if I added chemicals to my air, it would weaken me physically, spiritually as a human being, wow. dilute, dilute my, my, my inner spirit. So I've always taken that and you know what? Yeah. And even with Whoopi, her hair is, although, you know, there are many, there's cultures in, in Jamaica, look at that, Jamaica showing up and not just in Jamaica. I just went there because that's my roots. You, yeah. you, you ever heard of Rastafari, Rastafarian and, and, or locks. And yeah. some people, some people, they call them fashion dreads. Some people just wear it because it's comfortable, but there is a belief system behind dreadlocks. Um, of locking in the power uh, and, and combining in unity because when it's unified, things are much stronger. And it's yeah. also about strength. They never cut their hair um, because the strength is in the hair. They're like, according to them, it's, it is like tentacles towards God. The law, you know, you can, God speaks through the hair and these are energy fields, but each strand of hair. So to cut that would like be cutting the antennas. So even though Whoopi doesn't really focus on that part of her hair, like, you know, she's a very liberated woman. At the time she came in, she, she just said, I like locks. This is what I do. And you've never, you've never seen Whoopi do anything else but that, you know, she never went through the trends. She's a very yeah. in, individual woman. And I think she did it on purpose, you know, yeah, who knows? But my feeling is that she just didn't care. She's like, you know what? I'm just going to be different. Until this day, she's probably the only black woman or female character that I know that hasn't changed her style since day one. Right. Well, sometimes <laughs> they were long braids like yeah. yours. And they were yeah, long but she's long. Long. <laughs> sometimes it was nice and short. You know, yeah. I mean, it, it, she's she has changed her look up, but mm -hmm. she's always remained true to herself. And yeah. You know, I think. But when you think of Whoopi, yeah. when you think of Whoopi, you don't think of any other style but the locks. That's, that's what right. You think of. That's what that's you see. Right. That's what you remember about her. That was her thing. Anything she's changed, where she's wore a wig or whatever else, I don't remember that. And that's what when I look at Whoopi, I just remember because my lesson of strength and hair. I remember she just reminds me of a very strong individual who'll do what she needs to do 
in the way she needs to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, she's had, she's transformed herself right. so many times. When you think of the color purple and you think of Jumpin' Jack Flash, you think of Karina Karina, which is one of my favorite movies. Right. Uh, have you seen that oh. one? Yes, I've seen Karina Karina. I yeah. love yes. that one. Yes. No, you know the the sister act movies. And, no and, sister you know, act, Lord. I remember she that. Gets, she's she's able to and goes. She loses herself in the character, but she's always whoopy. Of course, she was. She's 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 really. Um, when I first saw Ghost and I heard Whoopi Goldberg was in there, I automatically thought, oh, great. What are they going to do to poor? What kind of character? And then I was kind of through my own my own looking at the world when she played that when she plays that psychic. Um, and she was and she was awesome. And I remember thinking I didn't have faith in Whoopi as the character. But when I watched the whole movie, I was sold. I was like, Whoopi, you rock that part. That was. Oh, yeah. Well, even when she was on Star Trek. <laughs> As Guinan. Oh, Guinan. Guinan. Oh, right? How did I do not remember her? Star Trek, I am a Trekkie, and I cannot believe I did not remember her. Guinan was such a wise, deep character. Loved her character. Yeah. Talk about it. representation. Yeah, talk about representation. She really, yeah. she really had that style and that flow of the show. And I'm, I'm even curious, you know, when, when, if, and when I get to speak to Whippy, how did she come around with this Star Trek character? Like, you know what I mean? It just went from, you know, the last thing I, I remember was, I think, jumping that flash. And then I saw her in Star Trek, or I was like, what? Girl has a. I think she asked. I think she asked right. to be on Star Trek. Wow. And, uh, and, and I don't know if she wrote a letter to Gene Roddenberry or what, but. If I remember, because she's talked about it a lot. Right. Um, if I remember, she reached out and said, I would really love to be part of this. You right, know? right. Because it was influential in her development as a young Black woman to see Nichelle Nichols as Uhura. Yeah, you know. You know, and, and here was a beautiful Black woman dark-skinned woman representing right in 1966 what yep. Yep. no that was and diane carroll diane carroll was another amazing beauty that was a, a, a wonderful representation and there so there's specs all the way through yeah but you know i think i think what whoopi did was she took it beyond the ethnic background and she took it deep really if you think about it out of all of those characters right, right fontaine could have been white could have been asian well you know well i i'm gonna i'm gonna put a little well you know on it i think it, it it's powerful because it she is black Right. And it's power because she is black. Because I have to say, that a white junkie and a black junkie, they are they are seen differently, even though they're going through the same shit. Uh, they're they really, seen differently. Yeah, they're, they're seen. seen yes, yeah, they're yeah. seen differently. I, I believe yeah. that from from the experience I have, I've seen white people who would see a white junkie on the street and go, "Oh, oh my God, you doesn't have a job. Here you go. I'm sorry about your bad luck." But a black junkie, it's almost like, "Yeah, you deserve to be there." Get get a life. What's what's your problem? Yeah. And, I've seen, and I've seen it. So I think when she plays these characters, yes, she represents them as black people. But I I believe she wants you to go beyond that and say this is everybody's problem. Because that is not in any of the characters except for the Jamaican character, right? Where the blackness is central to the right. character, and the right. little child whose right. blackness is central to the character, right? Right. Right. She could have done a, a, a Fontaine that, you know, I mean, Fontaine was very much a black right. character. They right. were all in their way. But with Fontaine, Fontaine's blackness was not the center of the story. Right. With Surfer Chick, her blackness was not the center of the story. Well, no. With the, the Cerebral Palsy character, right. her blackness was not the center of the story. It was with the others. With right. the Jamaican and with the child, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I mean, again, I mean, yes, I, it was it was absolutely important right. 
that she was representing them. Yes. Right? But she was, but the, I think the reason, I guess my point is, the reason is that that it's so universal. Yes. Right? This show was not just for Black people. In no. fact, there were a few Black people in the audience, but right. she was playing for mostly white audiences on Broadway. Well, that's, you know, you, that's where the money was at the time. Black people didn't want to see that. People, Black right. people... Black people didn't want to see themselves, but white people were interested in the Black experience, even though it wasn't primarily about Black, you couldn't help but see the characters of Black, because she was. But she wanted to just say, Valley Girl. When you think of a Valley Girl, you think, most people think of a white person. But she's right. flipping the script and saying, we're out there, Black people who talk like, oh my God, what's up? But it is an experience that I think she was selling, if, there, if you want to say selling, an experience to open your eyes beyond, beyond the perspective and, and say, okay, even if you may see a black junkie on the street, remember, this is everybody. Anybody and could be there. Like, you're, like you're, you're the guy you talked about. Right. And that they are human beings first. Right, yes. Right? Yes. And, that, and a theater is a safe place to explore worlds that you're not familiar with. Yeah, and Whoopi made, Whoopi made it a safe environment to touch the hem of the garment of the Black experience, whether right. they are a junkie, whether they are a child trying to bleach their skin, whether they are a, a surfer girl who's homeless because she was kicked out of the house at 13 and gave herself an abortion. Right. You know, um, that was, I mean, that's, talk about pertinent. I mean, that this child had no access to health care. And she went into a bathroom with a, yeah. a, a clothes hanger from the yeah. laundromat and, and gave herself an abortion and messed up her system to where she couldn't have children anymore. Right? <laughs> Those were some heavy hitting things. Yeah, even it, it was very heavy hitting. And we have to remember that not everybody, you know, when whatever reason, you know, reason people get their self in situation to get the they get themselves into or people assist them to get into it you know stuff happens and you know again um i remember just being in a when, when i had to go to sexual abuse um uh, uh counseling and i was in a room with maybe five other girls or maybe that's a little less maybe 10 girls and i remember just one girl who said her father got her pregnant three times and at the time, what I was what 14, I was like, ew, like, oh my God, how did you, in my head? Because I didn't understand. And I saw right. her as a white girl. And I, in my own culture at that time, from being the, from the black experience, looking at the white experience, I was like, oh my God, this happens to everybody. Oh my God, this, this is, I remember going for the first time I saw this white girl as, as me and vice versa. So, and, and I remember at the time I was very ignorant. I was like, oh my God, I, I don't know what to say. Like in my head, I'm like, why didn't you run? And I'm in the same fucking experience. I, I had it, I just didn't get pregnant, thank God, by the grace of God. But this woman went through this right. experience and how many people I'm assuming would look at her and go, oh, you're 14, how dare you? You asked for it, why didn't you? Or whatever nonsense no, people say. No, because she made these characters, like I say, very human, very likable. Very human. And very yeah. funny and, you know, and it's a shock right. when it comes in every single one of them. It has yeah. that moment, um, you know, with the Jamaican woman who right. is, you know, selling curios on the beach and this <laughs> wrinkled up little white man, you know, the old, <laughs> raisin, the old raisin comes up and invites her to come and, you know, take care of his house and take care of him and be love, you know, uh, sort of mistress. Or right. Whatever. Hilarious. Hilarious. And then the man dies and leaves everything to her. Spoiler alert. And... And she reflects on, you know, here was this very gracious man who would give somebody who he didn't even know, a total stranger, an adventure of a lifetime. And I didn't even thank him. Yeah. You know, it's that self reflect again. Here's a, a, human, thing. a human experience that allows us to reflect on, on ourselves, no matter what our skin tone is you know and then when she came back and did broadway back to broadway <coughs> it opens exactly the same way with fontaine 
another great thing, but she went totally political with it, which she didn't do in 1985. Because right. it was on George Bush being president at the time, Junior, mm -hmm. and um, you know, and she she was just saying, you know, I'm watching, I'm watching you, and 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 she was just very heartfelt and poignant about this does not make sense to me. What he's saying does not make sense. These things transpiring do not make sense. There are only three characters in that one. I have to say something, and I apologize. I have to go pee. I'll be back. Okay. Thank you. We will pause. Pee pause. We're what you're saying. We were, just, we were talking about back to Broadway and that she Oh, okay, did... yes, political. All right. Yes, the, she was very much more political in this one it, because I think it became more important. Like, because people, we are okay. now, yeah, we are now at the point where the governments, however she perceives them, is, and, and I, we know what I love, you know, the governments are, we're not being, they're not, we're not watching them close enough. And she brings in that song, every breath you take, every move you make, every step you take, every single thing, I'll be watching you. And it's, it's a message that echoes even today. We need to be more observant of those leaders that are running more this visible. society. Yeah, more and again, this, was in, this was 2005, and yeah. she could have been talking about the government right now or the yeah. last administration. The right. last administration, she could be talking about the Canadian government. She could be talking about the English government. She could be right. talking about the Spanish government. It, it's universal what she's talking yeah, yeah, about. Yeah, it's yeah. universal. Her show was like a message to the funeral, and you mentioned a point when we were watching this was when she says. Um, the the view with Star Jones. It was like she, <laughs> she referred to the view with Star Jones, yeah, and then yeah. she, <laughs> prophetic. She predict like her future was right there. You know, she could. She see. only did the three characters. She did. Yeah. She did Fontaine. Right. She did. Uh, what was it Lurleen? Yep. The Southern <laughs> woman with the fan, and she's right. going through menopause. Yes. Yes, right. She's, she's talking fun. about that. She's talking about feminine hygiene back in the fifties and sixties. What women had to go through and oh the pad, uh, oh the the mat, oh, the feminine pad joke. I love that one. The whole bit. The um, whole bit. I again. Which, you, you know, know, let me tell you, as a man, right, of any of any uh, ethnicity or, or or background, right, that's a very secret world. The world of feminine hygiene. We right. are not taught about it. We're not taught about menstruation. No, no. Right? We are taken into. I remember we had a health class. Right. And it was part of our PE physical education. Mm. And there were days when the girls went in, and they got their Disney menstruation movie thing. <laughs> and Disney. Then, Disney, Dis, Disney menstruation. Did you know that Disney made a menstruation movie? I know. Did. That's I a whole other. That's a whole other princess. Okay, that's a whole other princess. I can't but even. They did. Remember. They did make a menstruation film for schools. Oh. Yes, and so and then the boys would go in, and we learn only about men's stuff. Yes, Nothing yes, I remember that. of a woman and what a tampon is and how to know when you're, you know, when a girl is menstruating, how to treat a woman who is menstruating. Ooh, treat, and I love that. Oh, I think that's it's important, you know, right? Yeah. Whether they're your friend or your lover, you gotta, you gotta be. That's very, that's a very interesting point. We should have, it should be very like, you know, weaved in because I remember that, that the health class, the nurse would come in in that rickety old projector she's set up and you hear, right. <laughs> And you'd hear the word, <laughs> and you're sitting there just going, "What?" And they'd have the the outlining of the female body and the vagina, and you'd be like, "Oh my 
God. But what I never liked, they, they never had black women in it. It was always these white women. It's always white women. Was, you know, no, it was just like, what? And, and white I, men, too. Yeah. And white same. men. And I remember thinking, does that happen to me? Am I, does it, I would, I didn't know, you know? So it was, it's very interesting that, you know, Whoopi Goldberg really brings up things that should be brought up. Like, you know, like you mentioned menopause and telling women what happens and, 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 and letting like your why, Yeah. Why don't you, why don't more women talk about that? Why don't more men talk about that? You know, like it's such a hush hush thing. And perhaps that's why such, sexual violence and 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 abuse can happen because they we, we people don't teach the knowledge and like i don't know if I've, i said this before but i dislike when i hear parents especially as a nanny i heard a lot of it they tell these kids these weird names oh this is your woo woo and your hoo hoo i'm like no girl no don't, don't do that don't do that don't no do that. or your naughty bits your naughty bits what or your don't. private parts <laughs> I don't like any of that stuff. I don't Call like that. I'm with you. I'm with you. You know, I don't, I you know don't. we should do we should do a whole episode on the Disney menstruation film. Oh, yeah, I, need, I think we, I, I need I, to track I, it down and find it, and then that we'll watch would be it interesting. We'll I yeah, I think that would be because yeah, even the be babies, good. even the babies that they showed when they're talking about babies are all white babies. They're all white babies. All I, white you know what? Speaking about white babies, this is a quick segue. I remember I went to school in Niagara Falls and Niagara Falls on the Canadian side is very white, at least the time of the, when I went. And I went to an all white school. I was, the prob I was the only black person there at the time. And I remember we had this hospital journey and we went to one of the hospitals in Niagara Falls. And I remember there were babies in the, the room that we were looking at. And, and I remember one of the nurses pointed at a baby and she said, Oh, she's so beautiful. And then one kid goes, um, what? How? I don't even know how the question came up, but I think she pointed that to, she pointed at me and she said, if you were to have a baby, it would be called a mongrel. <laughs> I can laugh at that now, but I was in shock. I stood I'm up in and shock. And she just went on like it was nothing. And I remember like, you know, when you think of all these wonderful things in your head to say, and you're like, shit. And I was just like, what does this mean? But my, oh my point God. is, <laughs> yeah, we really need to have inclusions. And many times, like yeah. in the last, the last show, we talked about um, Island in the Sun and yes. how many of them were wearing Band-Aid colors. Even Band-Aid yeah. has, Band-Aid has changed now, thank God. I can go to the store and get a brown Band-Aid if I wish. That's, that's right. That, that's, that's right. You know, and That's the flesh strange. color in Crayola flesh crayon. Flesh 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 flesh. was always that band aid color. Yeah, it was always that bad. And I remember I being band aid and Crayola were in 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 the uh, in bed together or something. I, I, seriously, I would be very confused when the teacher said, "Take out skin tone," and you, and you see all these kids pick up these this band aid color, this pinkish hue, and it would say right on that skin tone. And I'd be mean, like, "That don't flesh. look like me." Yeah. yeah, flat. I remember mine said skin tone. It said skin it tone. Is, really? Yeah, skin, skin tone. tone. It said skin tone color. I've never seen anybody with that natural skin tone. Never, <laughs> never, never in my life. And so then, uh, back to Broadway. Back the third one, Broadway. the third character she did, she brought back her cerebral palsy character. Yeah, like beautiful. Again. again. Yeah. And it was it was similar just like you know there she repeated some of the stories in Fontaine that she did in the original to tie them together I think and then she repeated some of the stuff in the second in the cerebral palsy character um which by the way we just passed cerebral palsy awareness day Ooh. global world world cerebral palsy awareness day so this is the time to be talking about this um and and it was, but it was equally powerful, equally beautiful. Yeah, the message is timeless. It really is. It really is timeless. Timeless. It really beautiful. is timeless because you know, um, the more the the more we become aware, the more we we see the people that have been marginalized. The more that we we go, oh my God, is that what we've done? Um, is that is that is that is that what we've we we really focused mainstream to just include? a few facets of humanity you know well, what i mean because you know what you know what little black girl yeah we, I are mean, all, 
We are all mongrels. We are all mongrels. I'm gonna have to disagree with you. We are no. all mongrels. Well, do you know what a mongrel is? Maybe we have a different definition of mongrel. Okay, you go ahead. You share your. A mongrel is a mutt. A mongrel <laughs> is a mix of different. Is a different mix of different. Well, okay, things. I I agree with you there, but I, you know, here I am. This is me. I'm like I'm not a mix. I'm just pure spirit, like you are. I don't yes. know about a mix of shit. That's true. <laughs> <don't know>. <laughs> We're a spirit blend. We're, okay, I like that. A spirit blend. I like. That. So we need to take that word mongrel back. No, they I can want, keep it. No. I want that. I want that merch. I want that T-shirt, Mongrel Baby. I was a Mongrel Baby. And then we'll have the other shirt. And the partner said, "No, you can keep it." That's right. That's right. No, I want it back. It's okay. You can keep it. But I know. I feel you. I'm just having. I'm just having. Um. Um. <laughs> having too much fun. I'm having way too much fun. Um, and I think it's because the word triggered my thought process. I yeah. get it. <laughs> but we can change that. I think we can change that, you know? But that's the point. When we start seeing how we've marginalized one another for no reason, because right. nobody is, uh, physically, nobody is pure anything. Okay. Spirit, spiritually, we are pure. Okay, thank you. But physically... No, we're a bunch of mishmash. We're, we're mongrels. We're mishmash. We're mishmash of a bunch, a bunch of stuff, and we are trying our best in this world. And I think that's what the message that will be yeah. um, back to Broadway really emphasizes that we're all just trying our best. Have some compassion. You take care of you. I'll take care of me. Yeah. Um, and in this life of many, many characters, just enjoy the show. Just enjoy the show. That's it. Exactly. All the world's a stage. Yeah, all the world is saying, all around the world. In a day, day. Do be me do. Well, that's it for this episode <laughs> of classic screenshots. We wanted to honor Whoopi Goldberg because she is a classic. She is a classic in our time and we need to, you know, and listen, I know she can be controversial. I know people don't always agree with her politics, but when you go back and you look at her foundation as an artist and you look at the example that she has set, not only for young black people, but for all of us, right? right? The fact that she chose Goldberg as her character name or stage name, Whoopi Goldberg. Whoopi because she farted backstage all the time and people are like, oh, who let that Whoopi again? You know, Whoopi Cushion. There you right? go. Whoopi Goldberg, she's a self-made woman as we all have permission to be self-made people. Right, I like, I like how you, thank you, Henry. See, I like how you put that little tidbit of trivia on that and you're like, excuse me, you know what else I know? Look at you, I love it, I love it. <laughs> I'm watching you. <laughs> well, you know, I just want to add thank you, Henry C. Um, I, I just want to say that that it was it was a lot of fun watching her from the beginnings because I never experienced her as a child. Um, you know, growing up and watching her, and then watching her coming out on the stage in the 1985 version, her locks are short. Um, yet to have all the experience, yet to see what the, the business is truly like. And right now, this is her fresh perspective on what she had um, experienced up to then. And then seeing her 20 years later that she decided, yes, but I'm going to focus on political. So her views of the world what had, had, had really focused that it's not necessarily people, but it's the leadership and we need to bring that out. We need to be watching them. And you can see what she's learned, right? She's learned like, we need to be looking at our leaders, not only without, without us, but within us. How are we leading ourselves? You know what I'm saying? So, notice, yes, absolutely. Did you notice in the quality of her performance, not that she wasn't confident in 1985 because she was. Right. But there was sort of, there was more whoopee in it. There was more. In, oh, you more know, yeah, I see. Characters, she, there was more, it was less of a character, less of a mask. Yeah. 
She didn't quite lose herself in the characters. No, she, yeah, she's been through she, shit. She <laughs> been through the intimate, as she did in 1985, but now with 20 years more of life right. and heartbreak and heart song and, and all of this, you know, dreams fulfilled, right? This, uh, the 1985 one was just before she did Color Purple. And it was because she did this show and she went and performed this show for Spielberg in his little private theater. And Quincy Jones was there. Michael Jackson was there. Uh, Ashford and Simpson were there. Many other Hollywood and music industry powerhouses were there to have a private audience of that show from 1985. There you go. And that's what got her, that's what got her, uh, the role of Celie in, in Color Purple. She and I've heard a story once uh, about how she actually had another character that she was gonna do. Right. But she cut it out because she didn't want to offend Steven Spielberg because her character was based on E.T. <laughs> You see and that? he said, no, get your ass back out there and do it because I want to see it. And he loved it. Well, yeah. You know? she, she, has, she has a way of delivering her messages, you know, in, 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 in just heartfelt, hu hu heartfelt humor and transparency. Yeah, right. and, and she's always, I can't say what she's thinking inside her head, but I really believe that part of it might best be that my in only intention is not to offend, but to see, I want you to see a perspective and I'm going to use humor to deliver it. And I think we can all remember. And then that's humor is a sign of compassion as well to allow people to just enjoy life. And this is what I will take away. The big takeaway I'll take from back to Broadway, both double features is just live life, you know, just enjoy life, put a little taste of humor on it and uh, get through and do you. <laughs> You do be do. What Queen movie Diva. are we talking about next week? Oh, well, okay. Um, next week. Ooh, what will we be talking about next week? Well, um, I do. I don't know. I'm not sure. Right. I, haven't, I haven't picked a movie yet. About it. It'll be a surprise. It will be a surprise, but you know what? We'll be here and we will we will be sharing our perspectives on the classic movies. Some not so classic, but all classic nonetheless. And um, if, don't forget to ring that bell, be a subscriber, tell your friends about it. Uh, tell yeah, about us. Um, and remember, this is screen um, classic screenshot Mondays. So please subscribe and we'll see you, see you soon. I'm Queen Be Divine and my co-host, Henry C. will be here, so you be here too, and uh, be a buff. Be do be do buff do be do be be a buff. Da 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 da. -da. <laughs>